Everyone online is talking about six figure skills, whether it be affiliate marketing, copywriting, Amazon drop shipping. But here's the thing. I am terrible at all of those things, but in this video, I'm going to discuss five skills you can learn today that will almost guarantee that you will find some company that will give you a six figure income in some form of tech role. In particular, I'm going to focus on the skills that I've seen are in high demand in 2021. As someone that works in both uh, big tech as well as consulting for many companies, I have the opportunity to see a lot of the gaps that people have because they often call me to fill in some of those specific gaps like data engineering, data science, and just in general kind of data solutions architecture. But there are so many other skills that are worth knowing in 2021 that could guarantee that you've got some ability to gain a six figure income without having to pay Sifu Dan Locke 10,000 of your hard-earned dollars. So let's go into these five skills because I think they are very valuable. I think, again, I'm going to blow away a lot of the hype. I'm not gonna talk about things like blockchain because I think, you know, right now that's still a very much emerging field. I think there are solid basic technical skills you can learn today that will improve your ability to be valuable on your team, not only in terms of coding, but to go so much farther beyond that. So. Where to begin? In 2020, I spent a lot of time migrating my clients to the cloud as they were trying to deal with the whole pandemic and all the issues that that brings with it. And as they were moving a lot of their various workers from on-premise to in their homes, they had to migrate a lot of their workflows onto the cloud. And this remains to be a very popular place. And although a lot of larger companies are already depending on the cloud, I'm still seeing tons of small and medium businesses that still need to migrate a lot of their infrastructure to the cloud. Not to mention that people are still optimizing their cloud workflows and various systems in larger companies. So having some form of cloud skills, whether that be understanding how to administer things like GCP and Azure, whether that be understanding how cloud data warehouses are different than normal data warehouses, or how to set up things like microservices, or how to set up things like serverless architecture that also requires a lot of cloud understanding and understanding about all the various problems that you're gonna run into, like dealing with observability when you've got things that are in the cloud and heavily containerized and microservices and all of these various kind of design decisions that people make along the way when it comes to trying to utilize things like the cloud because you can gain a lot of benefits by using these various architectures but it all starts with you having a very baseline understanding of cloud how it works how it can actually benefit your company as well as how to optimize for things like costs you know are you running things that don't need to be run all the time and thus running up crazy amounts of aws bills i've definitely seen people spending thousands upon thousands of dollars that they didn't need to spend because they had automated processes that were running maybe two or three times more frequently than they should have been and so these little things make a huge difference in your ability to bring impact to your company and at this point almost every large company has some component in the cloud. And so you need to be able to understand how to interact with it. You need to be able to have some baseline understanding of, again, things like virtual private clouds and how that interacts with your other networks. So although last year I referenced learning cloud skills as one of the top five things as well, I still think it is one of those top skills that for the future remains to be something worth knowing because everyone is starting to utilize things like the cloud. Again, I have clients in the million to $2 million range that are utilizing cloud services. So it really is at this point ubiquitous in terms of what companies are trying to rely on the various components that exist in cloud services. Okay, let's talk about something that might seem a little less technical, but I think very much makes a large impact if you are able to deliver a very solid UI and UX. Now, UI and UX, some people might feel like is more about making things pretty, but it really is about understanding a user and making sure you develop systems that are very smooth. Um, you know, they look nice and aesthetic. We live in a world where people care about aesthetic. I personally don't want to open up a GUI that looks like it was created from 1999 using some sort of windows and it has all those various tabs. I want a smooth experience. I want something that feels like I am in a white granite coffee shop and I'm about to spend $10 on a cup of coffee, but in your app. And personally, if I've ever been on a project that was more of some form of product, I have always told the client that they need to hire someone that can do UI and UX because that is a differentiator. People have just a certain expectation in terms of what an application looks like these days. If your app isn't intuitive or it feels kind of clunky, people are likely to maybe not use it as much. It might not have that same stickiness factor. Trust me, I personally prefer working on the back end. Like even creating thumbnails that are borderline interesting for you guys is hard for me because I don't necessarily have that kind of natural eye for aesthetic. I have some basic ideas, but it's kind of hard. And similarly, when you develop UI UX, creating something to stand out in a world where we have tons of applications, tons of options in terms of services can 
help delineate if you develop a product that it is successful. And that's why it's hugely impactful. Also, again, when I work with clients, this is one of the people that I always end up having to look for at some point in the process because I need someone that I know that can develop clean looking and pretty applications because that is just how the world works these days. And honestly, if you're a consultant in this area and you're good at your job, it brings in pretty decent pay because people are willing to pay for good looking applications. So this next skill is actually something I thought I was really good at until about a week ago. About a week ago, I was conversing with a group of other engineers. We were kind of recording a podcast where we were reviewing the system design of Pinterest's image similarity detection system, where they're using components like Flink and TensorFlow to help kind of detect if images were similar in real time. And as I was discussing with one of the software engineers that had kind of worked on this project, I was flabbergasted at his knowledge and just depth of understanding of the entire system. I think it was crazy that he could pretty much talk about in depth why each decision was made. He sounded like he had developed every component along the way and knew not just again, the high level of the system, but also kind of what was going on underneath the hood. And I was just, again, kind of taken back on how one, Pinterest decided to solve this whole problem, but also two, just this person's skills. And the truth is things like system design and solutions architecture are very hard skills to develop because oftentimes most of us don't have the opportunity to work on these systems from scratch. Most of the time we're stuck kind of just tagging on various little bits of code for a new feature. We're really maybe either redesigning or having to build something that is either again, completely new or a redesign. Meaning that there are very few people that have very good system design and solution architecture skills. Again, this conversation with this engineer was just blowing my mind. I'll have to link to that chat eventually and you'll see what I mean. It won't be until about July, but having good system design skills and uh, solution architecture skills really sets you apart. It really elevates you as an engineer and will probably ensure that you make a lot more than just $100,000 if you're in the US, just because it is such a valuable skill and it is so rare to find people that are really high level in terms of things like system design and architecture. It is a very hard skill. It is something that is very rare to have to need to really sharpen, all of which makes it even more valuable. So if you can work for a startup where you have the opportunity to develop a system, really take hold of that situation. It could provide a lot of value for you as well as future employers, because you've got this skill that is very hard to develop outside of working on very big problems. Next, I'm gonna cram two skills together. I'm gonna take DevOps and MLOps. Yes, they're slightly different, slightly the same. I don't need you uh, calling me out in the comments section. I know that there definitely are some differences, but overall, both of these skills provide value beyond just the main skill. So a lot of people might know software engineering, a good amount of people know machine learning, but where you often have a hard time with a lot of people is people struggle with actually deploying things like a machine learning model or some form of piece of software in such a way that's super scalable and maintainable. These are very, again, difficult skills to do because it's very easy to practice things like developing a piece of software and maybe deploying it for yourself. But then when you have to deploy it across multiple regions and dealing with things like tens of millions of users across 20, 30, 40 countries and all the various kind of complications that has. And on the flip side with things like MLOps, just figuring out how in the world do I even take this model that I've created and put it into a system and make sure it's managed and I deal with all the problems that occur like data drift and other issues that just naturally happen to any model you kind of put into a larger system and continually feed new data. Most people don't really know how to do this. Again, plenty of people know how to code because that's easy to do relatively speaking. Uh, you can build a website for yourself. It's not that hard. Same thing can be said. It's pretty easy to uh, import scikit-learn and run some quick model through it and feel like now I know machine learning, but then the hard part becomes, wait, how, how does this go into production? I have had that discussion with data scientists. I personally ran into that when I first got out of school. It's just this constant problem of how do you get things from idea to production? And that's where I kind of abstractly reference DevOps and MLOps as they both are really focused on getting code, putting it into some form of production system, making sure it's maintained, making sure it's managed, making sure it's monitored and doing so much more again than just writing the code. And that's why it's very difficult but also very valuable for you to learn as a tech skill in 2021. Now, finally, ML and data science. You know what? That one gets its own video. I have a love-hate relationship in terms of 
data science and ML only in terms of the fact that it's not just about having a skill that is valuable, it is being able to extract that value out of a skill. And this is something that I think is lacking in a lot of cases for a lot of companies as they will hire a data scientist, they will hire an ML engineer, but sometimes they have a harder time, again, getting the full value of what these specialists really have to offer. Again, they're specialized in these specific areas that can provide companies tons of value, but often they'll either feel trapped because they have no idea how to deploy a model or two, they might feel like they're doing more analytical work and not necessarily something around research or science, or they might only be the second or third data scientist a company's had. So no one really knows how to properly grow them and provide value, not just for the company, but also for the data scientists and ML engineers themselves. Now, there definitely has been a lot of improvement in this area overall. So it's definitely not as bad as I think it was five years ago, but I'm still hearing some similar complaints from some people that I've discussed this with. So I just want to put off this skill for a separate video where we will discuss, you know, kind of the impact that ML and data science have, but also kind of the struggles we're still facing and what, how we can really try to extract value from it in 2021. So those were my top five tech skills for 2021 that I think are worth knowing. I think they will provide a ton of value both for you as well as the company. If you have a different skill, feel free to drop it down below. I'd love to know what other skills you think will be valuable as a engineer, whether that's software engineer, data engineer, and so on. In 2021, there's so many really skills you could learn. So these are the ones that I've seen are valuable in companies just based off of, again, consulting, working in big tech, working at startups. These seem to be differentiators in terms of technical skills. Again, there's plenty of soft skills. We could argue about what skills are more important in terms of like soft skills versus technical skills to some degree but I really wanted to focus on top tech skills. So again, let me know if you've got any different opinions. I'd love to hear it. Other than that, I will see you guys next time. Thank you and goodbye.